Taylor Trammell has been essentially the same player that we've expected him to be since he was a rookie in 2016. I mean, he's running, he's run a 23% strikeout rate his entire minor league career, which it, when you extrapolate that up to the major league level, you had 4%. You're looking at a guy that's going to strike out more than 27% of the time. Mm -hmm. I, my biggest issue with Trammell is his swing plane. I, I think it got too steep too quickly and he can't cover the outside part of the plate against right-handed pitching. And I think that's a huge issue against, you know, big league right-handed changeups, which so, explains quite a bit why he hit eight homers in 180 plate appearances, but only I, hit a buck 60 with a 42% strikeout rate. The guy, the physical tools are possible, maybe unmatched in the organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a better physical prospect specimen than Jared Kelnick is. And it's not yeah, even not close. close. Yeah, right. I mean, six foot three, six foot four. I'm trying to remember. I think he's like six, yeah, three, six, two six, twenty. Six, six, three. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, he and can, he's a, a plus runner, runner yeah. plus runner, at least plus raw power. I mean, everything is there. You, you can see why the Reds drafted him where they did, but until he figures out the swing and miss, he's always going to be a fourth outfielder with thump. Now that being said, just because, we talked about this last week. Taylor Trammell is exactly the player that fumbles around for the next two or three years in the organization, ends up in, I don't know, Colorado or ends up in Milwaukee. Texas. Yeah. yeah. And, and he hits, and he hits 270 with 30 bombs as a 29 year old. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly the player that does it. I would, if I were ranking him, Joe, I'd put him probably 16 to 22 range somewhere. I, I yeah. do value the fact that, um, like a ball is not a hurdle. Double A is not a high A is not a hurdle. Double A is not a hurdle. And really triple A is not a hurdle either. This is a guy who is kind of a four A guy right now and is ready to help in some manner uh, with a tweak or two. And, and I do put value in that. And when I look at the other guys in the Mariners organization that rank in that range, I mean, that's about where I have like Aguiar, um, you know, on the high end of that is Milcar Perez, guys like that. Like, yeah, those guys don't have uh, the struggles at the big league level, but they still have four levels to go before they get there. You know what I mean? So, uh, mm -hmm. and that's where, you know, that's one aspect, at least the way I do it with prospect rankings, that doesn't really jive straight across with player trade value because it's a little bit more subjective. It's market driven. Uh, is there a desire or a need for this player? Uh, while I grade and rank prospects in a vacuum because, you know, those things change so much. It's not static at all. There's no way to go, well, Last year, I would have had this player higher because this is the market for that. I mean, that's just insane to do it that way. I don't know anybody that really does it that way. Um, but if that's the way folks out there are thinking about it, you're always going to bounce players around. Um, but you're right. Like like keeping him in, in the top 12 or 14 is really tough right now. Um, and part of that is because there's so much talent in the organization. But part of that is we've seen the warts. Like we've seen, mm -hmm. you know, and they're pretty significant warts. Now, it, this would be different. Um, and I would imagine you agree if Tramel at the big league level hit 250 with a 24% strikeout rate and there just wasn't a whole lot of power, this would be a completely different conversation. Hit tool is so important for, for position players. And if that were the case, we'd be talking about probably somewhere between 10 and 15. And he probably would have spent a lot more time at the big league level last year, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a it looked like a thirty hit tool last year. It looked like a guy that um, was destined for a like a two twenty ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, Tramel has a couple of things going for him. He's got a couple of minor league options left. So if Seattle wants to give him the entire year at AAA as a twenty four year old to figure it out, uh, they could do that. And then Maybe earn a uh, September you, you, call mean, up kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you burn one of the options this season and then you, you go into 2023 with maybe a brand new player uh, with still another minor league option left going into 2023. I think that's an option, but he's got a lot of work to do. It's 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 too bad that the hit tool is so lagging because every other tool is is a big league capable center fielder, including the intangibles, the non-physical stuff. You know, yeah, people love teammate, it. Works hard. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. And he's a pretty smart guy too, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, now let's just see if he can put that to work, uh, and fixing that swing a little bit, because, uh, that certainly needs to happen. So, uh,
Hey, it's Jason Churchill. To get the full episode, as well as every other episode of the podcast, past and future, subscribe for as little as $5 per month by going to bit.ly slash get the pod. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash get the pod. All one word. A link you can also find on my Twitter profile. Hey, thanks for checking out Baseball Things. Baseball Things.